All right, so uh, VPN overview. So now we talk about VPN overview. So what is VPN? So VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a, net, it's a private data channel established across a shared public network. It connects all the networks or endpoint devices that needs to access the virtual network to form a dedicated network that provides a certain degree of security and quality of services. Wow, <laughs> this is a long um, definition of <laughs> VPN. Um, so, so, so VPN is actually uh, very simple, all right? So let's say this is the uh, internet uh, infrastructure. Yeah, this is internet, right? So um, how do we form uh, a secure channel over uh, the uh, internet to access to our corporate? Right. This is a. This is the company. Right. Now, of course, if you do not know about VPN, uh, let's talk about a private list line. Okay. So I know. Yeah. In uh, maybe 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. All right. So if if branches uh, wants to connect to another branch uh, of a, of the company, then you probably need to have a, a dedicated uh, line. You know that's connected from one location to another location, which is very, very costly. Okay, so uh, today, because the internet is so easily um, uh, connected to, right, you basically can go anywhere around the world and um, everywhere around the world, they have internet. So you can actually use that, that infrastructure and create your own tunnel to form a tunnel to access uh, privately, securely, and to access the company uh, infrastructure. Okay, so this is called virtual private network. Um, so virtual, virtual means uh, user uses the toll lines of the internet to set up their own private network without requiring physical dedicated toll lines. Okay, or we call it the uh, private lease line. Uh, private network user can customize a network best suit to their needs. All right, so let's look at the category of uh, VPN. Um, so at the at the data link layer, or we call it the layer two, right? So we have uh, uh, the protocol PPTP, uh, L2F, and also the L2TP. So this is at the uh, the layer two VPN, um, and we also have a layer three VPN, which is a network layer. Um, we have a GRE. And also the uh, uh, IPsec technologies, and also at the transport layer, this is the layer four. Uh, we have the uh, SSL VPN. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, different technologies. Um, now, in, in this slides, we are not going to discuss uh, PPTP and also the L2F because uh, these two are actually a very uh, legacy uh, protocol, and they are less secure. And most of most of the uh, 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 operating system nowadays um, started to uh, uh, remove this uh, feature from uh, from your system, right? Um, so PPTP, uh, L2 L2F, layer two forwarding, point to point tunneling protocol are not being discussed. Uh, so we will talk about the L2TP, layer two uh, tunneling protocol, and then the uh, GRE, IP security, and also the SSL. All right, so let's look at the uh, the different scenario types. So when we talk about the uh, the different uh, VPN scenario, we have site to site the VPN scenario. We also have the client to site VPN. Now, site to site VPN basically means this is the uh, the protocol or the technology which is designed to uh, to branch to connect two or more branches, for example. Okay. Uh, this is called site to site. So, example, we could have probably the third branch, okay, over the uh, uh, the internet, okay. Um, so this is the mainly is to is to uh, connect between two lands, uh, applicable technologies such as IPsec, L2TP, L2TP over IPsec, GRE over IP over IPsec, and IPsec over GRE, okay. Uh, client to site VPN uh, example yeah, I we just mentioned earlier we spoke about earlier 
uh, the client is actually outside or could be overseas and it tries to connect back to the offices okay using the uh, uh, the following technologies SSL IPsec L2TP L2TP over uh, IPsec okay so let's first discuss about uh, L2TP uh, L2TP VPN um, L2TP stands for um, layer 2 tunneling protocol this is actually a tunneling protocol set to transparently transmit PPP packets between user and the enterprise server it provides support for the tunnel transmission of the packet at the PPP link layer alright now you'll be surprised <laughs> this keyword uh, PPP Right, so PPP is actually a point-to-point -point protocol. So for the L2TP formation of the L2TP, uh, it actually involved PPP as well. Yes, correct. The PPP that we usually use to connect uh, to internet, yeah, that one PPP. Um, L2TP VPN applies to foreign scenario. Uh, we have the uh, NAS initiated uh, VPN. Uh, we also have the automatic dialing on the LAC and also client initiated VPN. Uh, so NAS initiated VPN basically means uh, example like the uh, uh, the uh, the the branch scenario, site to site scenario. Okay, if if anything that uh, wants to send the traffic over to this side of the network, then the the NAS, uh, this is the network uh, access device here, they will actually um, connect from the VPN automatically. A uh, client initiated VPN are the one that typically we installed on, on our laptop uh, when we go abroad then we need to double click and to initiate and we also support the automatic dialing on the lag okay um, now lag is actually uh, the uh, it stands for uh, L2TP access concentrator okay so this is actually a, a, a very uh, old term uh, used in um, in the dial-up uh, uh, era okay all right so um, so let's look at the uh, the client initiated L2 VPN okay this is the one that we use the most okay all right generally this type of L2 TP VPN is used when employees needs to access the server at the HQ, HQ using devices such as PC uh, mobile phones okay or maybe uh, laptops or iPad you know when they are on a uh, business trip or maybe they are on out of the office or maybe at home even this is the most commonly used L2TP uh, dial-up mode okay now why is it called dial-up mode because we, 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 uh, we, we are still required to, to double click you know to, to initiate that say I want to connect to uh, to the VPN okay otherwise uh, L2TP will not uh, automatically connect for you okay unlike the site to site VPN um, so the, here's the um, uh, the uh, the example okay so we, on, on the left hand side we have the uh, user yeah we have the user and um, so so the user actually um, wanted to send some data okay so this is the data and uh, after that the data will then be encaps encapsulated with the PPP header and after that on top of that it will be encapsulated with L2TP encapsulation header so there are two headers <laughs> will be encapsulated now when this traffic is then sent over the uh, internet to this uh, uh, LNS alright so um, alright so when you send over to this uh, H yeah, this is the, the H point okay LNS um, so LNS stands for L2TP network server L2TP network server this is a acronym of a acronym um, so so that the uh, now when, when we capture the uh, the packet in between let's say we perform a Wireshark in between uh, here we will find the public IP address header which uh, the source public IP to the destination public IP right UDP header uh, which is uh, using port number 1701 uh, port 1701 this is the default uh, port number and, and then we also have the L2TP header so we will discuss this in the next slide 
uh, how do they negotiate for the LTP session header uh, and on top of here we have PPP header then we only we have the uh, private IP address private IP basically means uh, when we form a tunnel right so here the user will be given a private IP right so you'll be given a private IP and then the on the on the on, on this side here when you send something right so it will carry your source private IP to the destination private IP which is your corporate the, the company server private uh, server okay using the private IP addresses all right so um, so once the packet arrived the LNS the H and uh, the two header will then be removed decapsulate so this part will be removed and after that when it comes to this side here to here uh, we can see the uh, th the data the private addresses and the Ethernet header okay so this is actually what uh, will be uh, is expected to see all right so let's look at the actual process okay so when this this is the process uh, from the uh, from the moment the user uh, started the uh, the session the connection uh, the dial up connection uh, until the uh, the user access the resources okay all right so so first of all um, so first of all the um, when the uh, user create the dial up yeah when you press the dial up um, it will actually start the uh, uh, the first packet over there is called the uh, uh, SCCRQ okay so this is actually a request a session a session request okay this is a, a session request uh, we call it start control connection request start control connection request so just remember the RQ here stands for request and and uh, and also look at the uh, the direction okay this is from the user that connects to LNS okay and again LAC stands for L2TP access concentrator so this is actually the uh, you can call it the the client site and then it will send a chap challenge and after that the LNS will come back with the chap response okay um, so this RP here stands for um, the uh, reply okay start control connection reply okay so after that the uh, once the verification success then after that you will send the uh, success message and then the uh, the CN here is the uh, connection all right um, so you will send a response and then verify verification access so based on this few handshake they actually uh, will establish the uh, L2TP tunnel this is just basically tunnel okay so you can see uh, from all this uh, handshake uh, there is no username password involved and neither the uh, IP address uh, is involved yet okay and after that um, the, uh, the the stage two this is stage one okay stage two um, uh, the uh, LAC will then send what we call the incoming uh, connection uh, request okay incoming connection request so this is the uh, sent to LNC and then LNC will come back with the reply okay so this is the time where they will uh, they will they will form they will negotiate for the PPP parameters okay as we learned in the uh, HCNA routing and switching uh, PPP negotiation parameters involve the authentication type the magic number and also the MTU size okay sorry the MRU size uh, maximum receive unit size so these are the uh, negotiation parameters and after that they will go through the uh, authentication process so let's just assume uh, they use the chap to perform authentication and um, after this is uh, secure then the next is okay the the okay so, so here you can see that the LNS authenticate the user okay uh, so once the PPP process uh, authentication has accomplished then the next process is actually they will negotiate for the IP uh, for the IP address so we call this uh, sending the IPCP control packet all right um, so after that once the user have the IP address the user can now access to the intranet resources okay so this is the the process all right so that is uh, L2TP so now we look at the next is called the uh, 
GRE, yeah, GRE VPN. This is the second uh, uh, technology that we will discuss. Um, GRE stands for General Routing Encapsulation. GRE, General Routing Encapsulation. It's a layer 3 VPN encapsulation technology. So GRE encapsulates the packets of a wide variety of network layer protocols such as uh, IPX, stands for Inter-Network Package Exchange, IP, Internet Protocol, Apple Talk, into IP tunneling packets so that this packet can be transmitted over heterogeneous networks. The channel of transmi transmitting the packet over heterogeneous uh, network is called tunnel. Okay. Now let's look at this uh, scenario. Okay. So let's assume, <laughs> let's assume we still have some companies that are, uh, are pretty much still using a very old legacy protocol such as IPX. And I think uh, some of you guys already know IPX was originally uh, developed by Novell and Apple Talk. And uh, you should you should know who's who developed Apple Talk, right? <laughs> um, right. So um, yeah. So if if let's say some of the companies they are they are still pretty much using uh, IPX, or maybe uh, let's don't don't talk about today. Okay, maybe in the past. Okay, because this technology was developed uh, during the um, uh, during the past, right? So, so maybe some of the companies they 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 wanted to to to, to carry. The IPX uh, traffic from here to this side, but unfortunately, in uh, our IP, our internet is pretty much everything about IP. Okay, now GRE can actually come to the help. All right, so we can actually f f create a tunnel. Yeah, we can create a tunnel here, and to support IPX traffic over there, or maybe the Apple Talk. Yeah, Apple Talk uh, protocol. Okay, and you know you should know Apple Talk by who, right? <laughs> So this is a over heterogeneous network mixture of the network. All right, so let's look at the uh, GRE packet uh, packet handling uh, process. Okay. Um, so first of all, we look at the uh, uh, some of the packet header. Um, on this side, we have the uh, private IP address of 192.168.1.1, the user, and uh, here we have a PCB user B 2.1 slash 24 so this is a, a definitely a layer 3 uh, value uh, that means uh, this is one subnet and two dot something is another subnet and uh, let's look at the uh, public IP address over here so this is 1.1.1.1 and we have another IP here on firewall B side the public IP address here is 2.2.2.2 so this is uh, the public IP address now we also have something called the tunnel IP address. Okay. Now, actually, the tunnel IP address um, is much needed because um, the, the, um, based on the uh, command, if if you want to create the uh, uh, GRE tunnel, okay. Now, this is actually just a, a recap. Uh, the things that we learned in HCNA routing and switching class. Uh, so, actually, we did learn about this command called the interface tunneling. Uh, tun tunnel interface tunnel followed by a value for example tunnel one interface tunnel one and after that we define the uh, the protocol of uh, GRE okay and then we define source address source IP address and we also define the destination address so source in this case will be 10.1.1.1 and the destination 10.1.1.2 okay now, why do we need to have the uh, the the IP address here? Because uh, with the IP address, this the status of the the protocol. Okay, so when we do a display interface uh, IP interface brief command, uh, in uh, not, we are not only looking at the uh, the physical status. Okay, we are also looking at the uh, protocol status. It has to be up and uh, up. Okay, physical and uh, and the protocol has to be up. So this is the reason why we need the IP address here uh, in order to bring up the uh, interface, to completely bring up the interface, okay? All right, so that's the reason why we have uh, the, pub, uh, the, uh, the tunnel IP. But if you look at the, uh, the whole process here, uh, there's, no public I, uh, there's no tunnel IP that's involved in this scenario, okay? Um, okay, let's back to the uh, PCA. So let's say PCA carrier data and he tries to send over 
and uh, what happened is that the uh, routing table uh, will look at your destination okay uh, this is the two zero destination and the next hop is actually the tunnel interface okay the next hop okay so let's say in this case uh, the tunnel is tunnel 1 yeah and this is the IP address so that means this firewall will then put this packet into this format see that okay and of course uh, in, in the tunnel description we have the uh, tunnel source and the tunnel uh, destination um, okay sorry guys uh, okay sorry uh, this is uh, my mistake okay the source is actually um, one 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 not ten sorry and the destination here is the two 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 okay and then there's an IP address value that we need to edit here which is the ten as the IP address okay um, so sorry about that uh, source destination is the public IP okay uh, the IP address command is actually about your own uh, in, uh, internal IP address so the uh, so after that the uh, the firewall will then encapsulate with a GRE header and with the additional of the public uh, header public address header which is destination 2222 this these are the inside information right and then it will send over to the uh, based on the public IP address to this destination okay so when this destination receive it will perform the reverse process okay so first of all you look at this this is a GRE tunnel after that they will decapsulate the header yeah the two header 2222 and the GRE header and once they decapsulate they actually see the uh, IP the private IP after that based on the routing table of this uh, firewall uh, 2.0 segment and they will forward to the next hop and eventually they reaches the PCB okay all right so how about the uh, security policy okay um, in our first few chapters uh, actually we we cover about the uh, security policy but let's do a, a recap over here okay um, so every time when we want to co uh, configure uh, any firewall um, by default uh, every traffic are uh, denied you know no matter where the traffic uh, from uh, public to private interface from uh, segment A to segment B whatever all the traffic will be denied okay now the, the the only way to allow the traffic is to first we need to understand zone okay so by default um, Huawei's firewall we created um, four zones uh, they are known as untrust trust zone and the DMZ zone okay uh, and the last zone is called local zone okay now local zone actually refers to the firewall itself itself the firewall itself is called local zone uh, DMZ is yeah is a zone where it carries a, a priority value of 50 local carrier priority value of 100 trust carrier value of 85 and trust will carry a priority value of number uh, of five now the higher the value it goes the, the 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 more trustworthy it is so for example local hundred and trust which means internet five okay um, so this is step number one we need to prepare the zone and step two is to add the interface yeah? for example we have uh, g101 or maybe I add another interface called G1 slash 0 slash 2 into the interface called trust okay or maybe in this case <laughs> this this guy is supposed to be one oh, one one slash one okay but I think uh, you get my point right first of all you need to have a zone and then after that we add all the necessary uh, interface to into the zone okay example and after that we will define uh, the security policy okay yeah, this is where we, we are now talking about security policy so for example uh, when the packet is sent from a trust zone to the DMZ yeah so we we either will have two action policy is either to permit or to deny this traffic so the policy goes by zone to zone right so we normally don't configure 
interface to interface policy. Why? Because uh, it's, it's very uh, configuration uh, intensive because today you might be uh, using interface G101 uh, as the public uh, trust interface, internet interface, and tomorrow you might add another interface called 202 and then you have to reconfigure a different uh, another policy in order to support your <laughs> Uh, your policy, right? So uh, if you're using Zone, it will be a lot easier. So let's say tomorrow you want to add another service provider. So all you need to do is to, to configure to add the interface into the Zone and boom, then straight away this interface will immediately inherit whatever security policy which already been defined at the security zone or maybe other zone, okay? And of course we can also create our own uh, zone. For example, you want to call sales zone. You give a priority value of 60. Uh, you can create another zone called the uh, um, uh, warehouse warehouse zone. Okay. You can give a priority of uh, 55 or whatever. Okay. So, so this is very important uh, because when we talk about the uh, the GRE tunnel, um, so we need to understand what zone that we should allow them to pass through. Okay. Now this is not as straightforward as like uh, when a PC wants to serve internet, you just need to make sure that trust to untrust zone, it is permitted. Now, now we are talking about tunneling. <laughs> tunneling. Alright, so first of all, uh, if you still remember, I mentioned about earlier the interface called interface tunnel 1. Okay, this is an interface. And we should actually, this interface will then should be put under DMZ. Okay, and uh, trust zone I just mentioned. Yeah, we can uh, specify any of our physical interface uh, as a trust zone. This is for all our PC. Okay, and then we have to configure one policy between uh, between the two guys here. Uh, so between the trust and the untrust zone, we should permit them. So this is policy number one. Okay, trust to DMZ, and we should permit. Now this is actually a, a packet which is uh, uh, before encapsulate. But once it goes into the tunnel, it goes in the tunnel. Now, guess what the uh, uh, the zone that we should actually configure for the tunnel? So, answer is actually surprisingly local, <laughs> because this is the tunnel endpoint. You know, this is the endpoint of the tunnel, or maybe you can call it the starting point. It, it depends on where, which direction are you looking from. Um, if we are looking at the uh, firewall A point of view, I want to send out this information, uh, this packet, which is encapsulated with the GRE, uh, the IP header that we saw in the previous slide. So this is actually the uh, the starting point. So we actually configure local the firewall itself as the 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 source. Okay, so this example, uh, this is the uh, local zone, and towards the untrust zone so we should actually create a policy which to permit okay now this is actually uh, the configuration to be done at firewall a now when the packet reach firewall b okay with the packet okay from the the top reaches firewall b this is coming from untrust to the tunnel point the tunnel endpoint this is the the, the ending of the tunnel and again we need to also put on the local local yeah untrust zone to local zone and after that uh, after they decapsulate the packet decapsulate the packet and you become a normal ordinary packet and then this time from the DMZ uh, we actually uh, permit the packet to the trust zone okay so this is actually something that we need to uh, think twice when we, uh, we configure the uh, policy okay Right, so that is GRE. Next, we look at the IPsec. Okay, IPsec. Now, IPsec stands for IP Security Protocol. Um, it's a protocol suite. It's a series of security protocol developed by the IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force. Okay, it provides a cryptology-based, interoperable, and high-quality security protection mechanism for the end-to-end -end IP packet exchange. And IPsec VPN is a network layer VPN established through IPsec tunnel. Okay, okay. So I think, um, yeah, so you should get the point, right? So IPsec is basically uh, is um, 
uh, it's a protocol which is designed to secure this channel here. It's, it runs over layer 3, so which means uh, the IP packet from here to here is like they, they thought it's just a, a normal routing. But once it goes through a firewall, firewall look at the uh, destination and, uh, and then if this is destination matches the IPsec policy, they will send the, the packet through IPsec tunnel which is encrypted, securely encrypted. And when it reaches the firewall here, they will decrypt the packet and then send it to as a normal plain text to the uh, final destination. Okay, so let's look at the IPsec protocol framework. Now, IPsec protocol framework consists of uh, two big uh, components. Okay, or may, we can call it the two big security protocol. Okay, um, the first uh, protocol here is called the authentication header. This is the, the concept, authentication header, it's called AH, and the other one is called the encapsulating security payload, ESP. Okay. Um, so there we go, ESP, and we have we have the AH. Um, now remember AH means authentication header, so that means uh, this, this kind of IPsec configuration, uh, they actually only will perform authentication. Okay, that means if A want to send something to B, they will first perform the authentication. If a password is correct, then they will actually uh, send. Uh, they will they will actually send and receive each other's packet. Okay, but during the the tran the transacts the transaction, uh, the the packet is not encrypted. Why? Because AH doesn't support encryption technology. Okay, and these are some of the. Uh, authentication algorithm that we spoke about earlier you remember md5 uh, you remember I, I spoke about the the, the waiting the weight uh, the weight kind of uh, machine kind of thing sha sha2 and the sm3 okay so basically the difference uh, of all these algorithm are the number of bits they actually use okay of course the higher the better but the higher the bits the slower the performance is okay um, so for ESP, now the good thing about ESP is that they actually perform not only the encryption and again depend on the different uh, algorithm that we choose, the higher it means better uh, encryption and it's, it's harder to be cracked uh, and also for authentication they also do support the following uh, mechanism. Okay. Um, and also for the key exchange. Okay, why do we need have to to have the key exchange? Um, the, they they will first have to establish a, a protocol using the ISA KMP um, to actually perform a handshake. So to negotiate for two parties. All right. So for example, we have the firewall A, and on this side we have firewall B on this side, and maybe firewall B only supports um, let's say MD5 and uh, SSA for the authentication and firewall A maybe support all of them okay so the, how do they know each other where which protocol that we will negotiate all right so this is the reason why the first packet that they will send out is the I, I, ISA KP, KMP uh, protocol to actually negotiate for uh, what kind of uh, mechanism that we're going to use uh, MD5 and the guy will say okay we use MD5 in terms of encryption we use a dash or maybe triple dash and the other guy will say okay we will agree we use the triple dash for the encryption so this is the uh, the uh, the simple uh, process okay All right so this is the um, yeah the IPsec SA um, so earlier we, we spoke about the negotiation right so how do they send the negotiation so this is what we call the IPsec Security Association. Needs to be established between the IPsec peers, between the two endpoints, before the IPsec implements secure data transmission. Okay, I just mentioned before. Uh, SA is an agreement between the IPsec peers in the communication. Okay, I just spoke about that earlier. They need to agree uh, to the same authentication uh, mechanism and also to agree on the same uh, encryption mechanism. Okay. Alright, so next we look at the uh, encapsulation uh, mode. Uh, basically we have two types of encapsulation. We have transport mode encapsulation and we also have the encapsulation in tunnel mode. Alright, so let's look at the first transport mode. Uh, so for transport mode, in a transport mode, an AH 
or ESP header is added between an IP header uh, added between okay this is the keyword is added between an IP header and the transport layer protocol header to protect the TCP UDP and the ICMP payload okay so there we go this is the original IP uh, header and we have the TCP header and then we have a data so the AH header is then added in between the layer 3 and the layer 4 okay same goes for here and and this is called transport mode with only AH transport mode with only AH so that means they will only authenticate the header and the authentication scope is actually from here to here from this point to this point okay and they will perform a hash algorithm so the receiver side will receive and after that they will also perform a hash algorithm if the value uh, are not matched therefore the packet are not are not uh, being authenticated all right so um so including the IP header now um, so some of the changeable fields okay now some of the IP header are not included for example like TTL okay if the packet go through many hops uh, as we know the TTL value will, 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 will gradually decrease and then after that uh, if you if you recalculate the IP header uh, it will be a different value okay um, now we can also configure a uh, ESP for authentication and also for encryption and this is the scope for the encryption um, so they will encrypt the TCP and also the data so which means when somebody send this uh, packet from A to B the original IP header can still be seen from which IP to which IP but inside the data which TCP uh, port that you connect to nobody knows okay you can only see the IP uh, and of course the last one is the AH plus the uh, uh, ESP right so this is actually uh, once we, we have the ESP running on this side here and then on top of here we run another AH authentication this is the most secure by far now in, in what situation we use the transport mode so typically for transport mode uh, are use uh, are, are good for LAN scenario alright so for example you have a uh, we have a, a web server or maybe uh, an application server okay sitting at the front okay and uh, application server wants to connect to the uh, database server right and then uh, so between these two guys right so we actually configure the transport mode IPsec for these two guys uh, it's one of the one of the many use case uh, within the LAN uh, the reason is because we, we want to remain the IP header as original as possible and they are not really suitable uh, for router scenario so the next mode is the transport uh, tunnel mode sorry uh, encapsulation in tunnel mode now in the tunnel mode an AH and ESP header is added outside okay this is a keyword outside so the earlier one is between so this one is outside uh, the raw IP header and also the new IP header is added so look at this case raw IP header basically means this is the original piece of information and new header is the one that's um, added to outside and uh, this header is actually used uh, for the public routing all right so ex especially the packet wants to go through internet so we have the uh, the public IP address of the source and the public IP address of the destination and again AH here means they only authenticate but no encryption okay and the next one is same thing ESP um, they will actually encrypt uh, the scope from here to here raw IP header which is your original private IP address TCP and the data everything will be encrypted so nobody in between can actually look at your information about what is the private IP where to where they're going because all these are encrypted and uh, and also authentication scope uh, of the ESP okay? and of course the final one we have the AH ESP and AH will authenticate everything from here to here and then the encryption here to here and then the ESP authentication from here to here so this is again the most secure and also the slowest one all right so next we look at the uh, IKE SA uh, now earlier we spoke about the uh, IKE perform the function of the negotiation uh, so IKE SA serve as the IPsec SA by providing automatic key negotiation and establish the IPsec 
All right, so this is the, the process. So IKE actually will connect to the um, uh, UDP port uh, 500, okay? Um, so, and then they will actually start exchange the IKE, uh, the packet, uh, just to negotiate for, okay, what kind of uh, AH that we're going to use, or what kind of ESP mechanism that we're going to use. There. So once we agree, then they will start sending the packet, and then uh, and everything will be uh, encrypted, okay? Right, so this is the uh, IPsec encryption and decryption authentication, uh, the whole process. Uh, so here we start from the IPsec uh, sender, All right? So go through the ag uh, encryption algorithm, and uh, here they actually use symmetric key, yeah, the same key from uh, for encrypt and also the same key for decrypt. Uh, it can be manually configured or generated by the uh, DH algorithm and then shared among each other. So they will I encrypt the IP packet and then uh, they will also authenticate the algorithm. Uh, this is authentication algorithm using HMAC for example. Okay. Um, so it can be also manually configured or maybe generated by the DH algorithm and also being shared to each other. So as 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 and when we see the symmetric, you know that this is the, the two key that shared by the same key shared by both party. Okay, and then the um, they will encrypt the packet and then they will generate the uh, the hash the value and then come up with the ICV. And then this ICV will also be sent over to the sender. Now, when the sender receives the ICV, the hash value, and uh, the the the, set, the receiver will also perform a calculation on this uh, encrypted packet and to try to retrieve the ICV. And if this ICV value are the same matches, then it shows that the, the packet has not been tampered. Okay. So the, do the ICV value calculate the two end matches? If yes then they will start uh, to decrypt the packet. Okay, This is still encrypted IP packet, but they have to go through the decryption engine uh, in order to decrypt become a normal IP packet. Okay. Right, so next we talk about the overview of the SSL VPN. All right, so SSL is uh, a security uh, protocol. It provides secure connection of TCP based application layer protocol. Okay, so this kind of uh, uh, VPN only works at the TCP layer, unfortunately. Okay, uh, so there's always a good and bad, all right, uh, especially our web, our web server. Okay, uh, so this is a, a normal uh, a web server which is no encryption, no secure. Um, HTTP traffic will then be sent to TCP header. TCP header will add the port 80 and then uh, it will add the IP header source destination and they will send out the packet. Nothing being encrypted. Uh, but as opposed to the uh, secure, uh, t uh, the, the data within the HTTP will then will go through the SSL engine and then they will encrypt the data and send uh, and add on the TCP header and the IP header and TCP header they will add in port 443 and then send over to the uh, receiver. Okay. Um, so let's look at the, uh, the Huawei. So we have two types of products uh, portfolio uh, that can perform the SSL VPN. Um, so the first product that we have is called the SVN series. This is the security access gateway. Uh, this product is actually a, what we call a dedicated SSL VPN product. So that means this this appliance itself only does SSL VPN, nothing else. Uh, we also have this feature SSL VPN uh, that bundle into our USG firewall. So that means we can also activate the SSL VPN within the firewall function, a part of uh, other you know features like the. Uh, uh, IPS, uh, VPN, you know, so the, all these are supported. Um, so what are the uh, feature? So first of all, user authentication. Yes, we can uh, do user authentication from here. We can uh, have a local user or maybe uh, refer the user to another radius box or maybe to LDAP, etc. Uh, we can also perform file sharing. So file sharing basically means the um, uh, let's say this is a public internet, all right. So um, the uh, user from here they 
they connect uh, via SSL VPN back to this uh, appliance and this appliance will then connect to the backend file server and retrieve the file in plain text not encrypted format okay now this is the, the whole idea so it will retrieve plain text and then after that from here to here is SSL SSL VPN okay yeah so this is the the file sharing that we are referring to okay um, we also support the web proxy uh, now web proxy is almost the same as the file sharing uh, the, the file sharing method basically means the, the back end is basically the uh, uh, the SMB type of a file server or CIFS kind of file server okay now the web proxy here refers to the uh, back end which is okay maybe for some companies they have the uh, uh, in internal uh, application server which is running on web and this channel itself is not secure HTTP this channel is HTTP but from the appliance to you <laughs> to the user is HTTPS okay so this is the function of uh, one of the function one of the many function okay uh, every, anything which is not secure eventually after you pass through the VPN uh, gateway here sorry the SVN gateway here and become secure uh, port forwarding okay it's just like any uh, other port forwarding functionality through a secure channel and then port forward to uh, some machine right so example like a uh, remote desktop example uh, network extension uh, network extension is basically just like any other uh, ordinary VPN so the client can actually obtain private IP address private IP address of the company and then uh, with this network extension you can actually access uh, into your companies as if this is a just another VPN uh, protocol okay